Hello, it is Taylor again. Hopefully this really actually will be a short video. Excuse the wobbliness. I know you've got range from here to here, and that's my vintage tripod from like the 60s. So it's kind of neat that you can see that. Anyways, I was so excited last night. Um, I hope not to ramble nearly as much tonight. I'm going to use my leftover paints. Um, so we've got color shift paints mixed with pouring medium and water. We've got opaques here, and they're mixed. The white is my biggest enemy, that's why I always hesitate to use it. But it's got pouring medium, um, Floetrol, and water in there, and hopefully it's keeping its consistency, which is, yeah, it's going to do. Um, you know, the black was really overwhelming to the, pic the painting from last night. It really dried dark. Well, I like dark, but not everybody does. I know everybody's got these candy coated colors going on right now and okay that's been covered so I don't think I'm gonna bother you guys with that I'm gonna go ahead and stick to my dark side okay so here we've got our little color shifts everybody's ready to go I have sprayed um, sprayed hair oil with cyclomethicone and dimethicone in it into the cup I've sprayed that in my opaque colors um, titanium should be heaviest so I'll go on top I've already spilled stuff on my cheapy thrift store canvas and maybe I'll do a circular pour so I know some people ask me about that how you do it um, and it's easy you just roll your cup and do ribbons and then you let it move and you kind of shift it away in a half round shape so it just takes a little messing with them they don't all come out perfect um, or you paint on an LP okay enough said now to actually do something interesting again I'm gonna try to remember to go light on the black so of course we drop white in as the base because that'll flow through when we flip the cup over or roll the cup out, however I decided I'm going to go on that one. And I'm just going to go polar opposites for the moment. So these have the oil, hair oil in them. And I'm going to pink. I lost a lot of my green last night, so I'm going to see if I can retain more of that tonight. Now I know that this isn't enough to cover this canvas, so that, that's why I'm, mm, that might be a little thick. That's why I'm doing basically what's going to be considered a negative pour, negative space pour negative space anyways so here we go more color shift I love these color shifts um, almost as much as I like the color art primary elements those are exceedingly cool those are just beautiful and they're really heavy so you really got to kind of balance those out a bit Let's see huh, here I go back to the black oh I probably shouldn't don't do it do it so I'm doing tall pours. Oh, and black has little paint boogers. So I have my paint booger remover handy. So I might have to fish those out. And you know what? You just got to go with it and not get real uptight about the fact that it might change some of your pattern. Just roll with it, man. Roll with it. See where it takes you. It's awesome that way. Zen and the art of pouring, or the art of pouring and zen. See that white? It just sank right through because titanium white is heavy. And uh, let's go just wrap up our. I'm going to puddle a little bit of my color shifts. Color shift, and then we're going to go with the blue next. I love the dark blue, and it really kind of presents nicely. It seems to be semi transparent. I don't know if that's for me putting in so much gloss medium or if that's the nature of it because I don't remember where the bottle is or which one I used for that. So we're going to puddle a little bit on the top here. If it will puddle, puddle, puddle. Puddles will give you a slower pour, a smoother pour, a less busy pour unless you shift your canvas a lot. Then any canvas and any pour will be busy if you do a whole lot of manipulation of the canvas. You know, it just goes zigzaggy. Sorry, I talk with my hands and I'm Irish. Welsh Irish. We're all Mets here. We're all Heinz 57 here. Own it. Okay, sorry this is probably taking longer than I think. It's so funny because you think you're going really quickly and then you look back at the thing and it's like, wait, how many minutes was that? Holy moly, people were probably pulling out their hair going, let me out. Okay, that one's empty enough. I'll just stack these up over here. I try to stack them like this hoping that when they dry I can just kind of pry some of the paint out rather than having to waste, waste that do I? Do I? Just a little bit. Okay, step away from the black. We're putting that to the side so I won't be tempted. And there we go. Rest of the color shift. Blue, greeny, pinky, purpley. 
I don't know if you can catch all of the variances. And it's a very busy cup. Again, I don't think we're going to cover the whole canvas. In fact, I would be amazed if we did. I would have had to have thinned it out a lot to cover the whole canvas. So here we go. Fun, fun, fun on a Monday night. Unwinding. It was finally nice here. It was only in the mid-70s, which is like 35 degrees cooler than it was for a few days last week. We all thought we were going to melt. Melting. Okay, again, I have sprayed hair oil in the cup. I have sprayed hair oil in all the opaques, and everything else is open game. And uh, when I do a, a negative, if there are spots, then I might actually paint around or even pour around in a solid color. It just depends on what happens. So I know you can see me from here to here. Hi. <laughs> here we go. I'm thinking, thinking, round pour, half moon pour. Yeah, I can. I could do a half moon this way. And then that's more of a pour than a dirty cap. So let's try it. Why not? This canvas only cost me a buck from a thrift store. Okay, we're probably tempting luck. I don't think I'm going to have the full coverage for that. And see, I love ribbons. Ribbons are beautiful. And then I'm, oops, not containing. I need to contain when I have such little, small amounts of paint. Let's contain, because we're going to want it to cover as much as possible. Whoa, sloppy pouring, sloppy pouring. See, it is getting busy right there. You can see those little jig jaggies from all the motion. Okay, definitely don't have enough paint, but that's okay. So, what do we want to do here? Salvage. Don't go anywhere. How do you stop it from moving? You don't. Let the adventure continue. Okay, yeah, I could have done that in a more thought out way. Let's see, we're going to have a lot of that fun stuff there. So we're going to do some of that. Okay, we got a lot of flowing going on. Yes, we're going to be a very busy canvas. See if we can get some of the liquid down there so that maybe we can reshift and recoup what we've done. We don't want everything to fall off because we need that paint. His mama didn't calculate. Whoops, there goes my rack. <laughs> oh, and there goes my pour. That's okay. So we are getting a pretty busy pour because of all the manipulation. Now, a lot of times when I get a solid color like that white, <laughs> gosh, if that white cracks and curdles, I'll be not a happy camper. Me and white have been having a lot of issues lately. Okay, trying to funnel it. This must be entertaining. I can only imagine. Well, I'll get to see it later. Come on, we want a little be celestial, but actually coverage, non-coverage. I'm out of paint. Stretch, baby, stretch, you can do it. Holy crap. Well, here I should be capturing some of this in case I need to do some backfilling. Yes, and the pros out there are giggling at me, and it's all right. I gotta learn. We're all learning, right? We're all learning. And even though my canvas is getting sloppy over here, it's okay because I can paint it white, black, blue, purple, green, whatevs. This is called not having enough paint. Oh, I'm getting paint on my wall. <laughs> Actually, yeah, we're not gonna talk about that. And some people dig drippage. I kind of don't. I want it to. I want it to do more, man. Okay, and you know what? Sometimes you just gotta pretend you're a hammer. Oh, I don't want too much mud. Roll and pull, roll and pull. Sometimes you can roll the pattern. Roll and pull, roll and pull. And it's getting muddy but that will allow some of the other stuff to continue flowing down in that corner. I hope you could see what I was doing besides making a mess. Okay, so we've got some little hair oil that's done its own thing. So I'm not really a fan of what's going on there, but it's allowing stuff to continue moving. I hope you can see all the silly things I'm doing here. Roll it back. 
Can you see that I'm rolling it back? Let's see, I guess I can manipulate this. Yes, I'm getting fingerprints all over everything. However, it's in the interest of the greater good, right? It's gonna be interesting to see how this comes out. Kind of digging it. I'm so focused on this corner and not seeing what's going on here. That white, I have a phobia about white lately. Don't know what the deal is. So what I'm probably gonna do, see if we can pull some of that down. Pull, pull, pull so that we can shift it back. I'm gonna try to shift back into that area. Hopefully if I torch it, just hope that darn white doesn't take over. Okie dokie. So I got a lot of funky swirly that I don't feel really matches the feel of, of that. Come on. Come on. See, I guess this is the part of the video that takes the longest. It probably drives people a little crazy, but this is where all the action happens, right? It's where all the beautiful stuff happens, man. And see, now if I want to shift this stuff back down and kind of even it out. I'm going to have a lot of craziness going on up here, which I may or may not really want to have happen. Let's see. Well, let's just roll with it. It's the center of the earth, man. Yeah. Okay, we still have a lot of motion in the paint, so that's a good thing. Or could be perceived as a good thing. And sometimes I'll even take ribbons and go back along this area when I do a half round print. This is the sloppiest one I've done. I will not fly. Come on, you're not done moving, are you? I don't think you are. You've still got some waves and some groove going. Hope you can see that. I can't see my phone. I keep trying to put it behind me, but I can't find a good way, and I don't have a way to suspend it from my, uh, my ceiling like Anne-Marie does. Well, this is coming out interestingly. Could probably just let it move on its own for a while. Looks like, see, when you look, you can see some waves, so that tells you that there's still viscosity in the paint. And it could still be moving into something quite extraordinary. Sometimes you don't want to push that paint. Getting more of an earthly look to it, in a way. 